Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kemper Arena and the final game of the 47th Annual NAIA National Basketball Tournament. This championship game will feature the Tigers of Fort Hayes State University of Hayes, Kansas, and the Pointers of the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. First, the honorary coaches from Fort Hayes State, Larry Huddleston and Tom Lance of Thomas McGee and Sons, and the honorary coaches for Wisconsin Stevens Point, Riley Sloniker and Bob Lemons Jr. of Bob's IGA. And now for your starting lineups at guard for Stevens Point, 5'10 senior from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, number 12, Brad Soderberg. At guard for Fort Hayes State, 5'11 sophomore from Detroit, number 10, Raymond Lee. At guard for Wisconsin Stevens Point, 6'3 junior from River Falls, Wisconsin, number 32, Mike Jantz. At the other guard for Fort Hayes, six foot sophomore from Ypsilanti, Michigan, number 20, Reggie Grantham. At the forward for Wisconsin Stevens Point, 6'3 junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, number 30, Terry Porter. At one forward for Fort Hayes, 6'4 junior from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, number 31, Edgar Eason. At the other forward for Wisconsin Stevens Point, 6'7 freshman from Racine, Wisconsin, number 34, Tim Negley. At the other forward for Fort Hayes, 6'5 senior from Shreveport, Louisiana, number 42, Willie Shaw. At center for Wisconsin Stevens Point, 6'6 senior from Oak Creek, Wisconsin, number 50, Tim Lazarsik. At center for Fort Hayes State, 6'7 senior from Detroit, number 44, Nate Wallen. Head coach for Wisconsin Stevens Point, Dick Bennett. The head coach for Fort Hayes State, Bill Morse. Oh yeah, we are ready to play for the national championship tonight in Kansas City. And we'll be back with the start of tonight's basketball game in one minute. Let me tell you quickly that Chicago State defeated Westmont, California, 86-82 for third place. We'll play for the title now. It'll be Nate Rollins at 6'7", Timmy Lazarsik at 6'6". Who's got the tip? Give it to the Cats from Fort Hayes. Here they come. Their nickname is the Tigers. The first chance to score. Shot up. Shot a roll off by Nate Rollins. The ball batted away inside by Raymond Lee, and Fort Hayes still in control. And right away, Coach, we see a key rebounding. you got to give the edge in a big way to the Tigers from Fort Hayes. Point will have to do a job keeping them off the board. Yes, they sure will. And uh, there's very important that they don't allow the quickness of the guards to come underneath. Uh, and steal. Well, Timmy Lazarsik that time with a rebound of the miss by Lee. We've got no score. Pointers in control. Here's Brad Soderberg. He'll run the show from out on top. Look into Mike Jantz. Zone defense now. A look at a zone by the Tigers from Fort Hayes. Here's Terry Porter. What a great tournament he's had. Soderberg, no shots yet by the pointers. You know they'll be patient. They'll get a good one before they put it toward the rim. It's interesting to see them come out with a 1-3-1 uh, zone trying to uh, overplay the passing lane and cut down the uh, quickness of reversing the ball back to the weak side. Uh, notice number Lee is out in that passing lane. Oh, Nagley inside to Lazarsik, made a good pass, but Timmy not expecting it, couldn't hold on. One turnover for the pointers the first time they touched the ball. We've played a minute 15, there's no score. Here come the Tigers, Lazarsik knocked it away and reclaimed inside. A good defensive look that time by Stevens Point. Yes, they are uh, definitely ready to play. And uh, again, uh, Lazarsik is just uh, starting right, right off where he left off, uh, playing excellent defense inside. This is Nagley, the freshman from Racine. Boy, what a great second half of the season he's had. Terry Porter's first shot's in the air. Hey, Point's got a lead, 2-0. And it looks like Terry's taking right off where he left off. Terry averaging 25.8 points a game through the first four games of the national championship tournament. Looking to go inside, lob pass to Rollins. Who chased it down? Mike Jantz. Fort Hayes looks just a little bit tentative uh, uh, as they're worried about that defensive unit. Well, Nate Rollins is a real force inside for the fellas from Hayes, Kansas, averaging 17.8 points a game. Oh, Soderbergh turned it over. Here comes Raymond Lee. He'll take it all away. Porter let him lay it in. It's a 2-2 game. The, kick, the quickness of Lee is uh, really a factor, I think, in this ball game. We'll have to watch as this uh, unfolds tonight. 
2 2. We played two and a half. Jantz in the corner, looking for Lazarsik in the middle, but the zone really playing the middle tough. So they're plugging it up inside. They there got, it, they got nice. it. Couldn't quite coax it in, though. And the rebound comes down to Rollins. This is Willie Shaw, 31. Or check it, Edgar Eason. Edgar Eason, 31. Here's Willie Shaw inside. Knocked out of his hands, fouled by Terry Porter. We'll see if it'll be a shooting foul or just a common foul. First foul on Porter, first team foul on point. You might mention that that uh, is particularly a, a, a problem here that uh, the pointers with seven-man rotation can't really afford to get into foul trouble early. Willie Shaw, the man at the free throw line, 6'5 and a senior from Shreveport, Louisiana. He is not a good free throw shooter. Shoots 56% only from the free throw line for the season. He's also a 56% shooter from the floor. Well, he looked like 100 percenter on those two. It's 4-2, a lead for Fort Hayes. A little, Again, a little pressure coming down the floor. A little trapping defense in the backcourt. Doesn't look like anything too serious at this point, Steve. Just no, want to let Stevens Point know they can play that way. That's right. Here's Mike Jantz. That'll be off. It'll be off. Terry's got a rebound. Thought about going back up with it. Nice spin move inside, and his shot wouldn't go. And the next rebound, knocked out of bounds by the Tigers. Pointers will bring it back. They're working the boards hard. They're big, but uh, the pointers are hanging right in on the boards. That's going to be uh, key as the night goes along, too. Terry Porter has had a great tournament shooting the basketball from the floor here. He's at 58% in the four games, and certainly he'll have to shoot well tonight for Point to play well against this fine club from Fort Hayes. Grantham uh, tries to cover corner to cover uh, corner on this 1-3-1 uh, defense, and so far he's been able to do it. Grantham, number 20, who plays down low on the defense for the Tigers. Fort Hayes made it into this championship game last night on a dramatic last-second shot, and I mean literally a last-second shot. Porter tried to force it inside. Tigers stole it away. Here comes Raymond Lee. Knocked, Jantz knocked off the backboard. Good hands by point that time, and Jantz recovered it. it was about Real to, good hustle back on defense, save that lay-in. About to tell you the last-second shot last night by Joe Anderson from Fort Hayes. As the horn sounded, the ball was in the air, and it was a win for Fort Hayes over Chicago State, 86-84. Great basketball game. We won't see 86 points by either one of these teams tonight. It doesn't figure to be that way. We played four and a half. It's four to two, Fort Hayes with the lead. Soderberg in the corner. Here's Lazarsic, no place to go. Chance is open, it's in the air, it's in the bucket. And the weak side, they're finding that soft spot on the weak side of the foul line. And that'll be there if they can reverse the ball. 4-4, 15-12 is what we have in the first half. Jim Crandall with Steve Stevens with you, live from Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Nice effort, Raymond Lee laid it home. Good job going solo, one-on-one. -on -one. Took it right to the hoop and put it through. That'll be a whistle foul. It'll go against Willie Shaw. And we'll be back with more basketball from Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, as Fort Hayes leads UW-Stevens Point 6-4 with 14.54 to play in the half. You support the Stevens Point Boosters. They support the Pointers. Six to four, Fort Hayes a leader at the 1454 mark here in the first half. WEIU TV in Eau Claire, Wisconsin has purchased the television broadcast rights to this game. Any rebroadcast or other use of the descriptions, pictures, and accounts of this game without the expressed written consent of WEIU TV is prohibited. Here's Jantz and Soderbergh back out on top. There have been no substitutions to this point in the game for either team. If uh, Point can reverse the ball uh, from inside to Lasarsic, back to this uh, heel right here, or the side of the weak side of the free throw line, they got a real good shot for a chance for some open shots. Terry Porter buried the eight footer off the reverse, and it's a 6 6 game. It's a tie, 14 23. First half, Steve Stevens with Jim Crandall live from Kemper Arena in Kansas City with more great college basketball for you. Of course, it's on TV 13 in Eau Claire. Terry Porter claims the miss, and the pointers can take the lead with a hoop here. 
Stevens Point to get to this basketball game in the first round, defeated Hillsdale, Michigan, then Arkansas College in the second round, West Virginia Wesleyan, Porter's got another one in the air, that one hard off the far bracket, and here come the Tigers the other way. Edgar Eason decides to hold it up. We have not heard much to this point in the game from number 20, Reggie Grantham, who has been a big scorer for Fort Hayes. That foul may go against Nate Rollins, I believe it will. Yes, Grantham, uh, right now, he's uh, working very hard on the baseline of that 1-3-1 one, one zone. And Steve, here's a guy who has some ties to Wisconsin basketball, the head man of Fort Hayes, Bill Morse. Yes, uh, I coached against him when he was at uh, the College of Racine, and uh, uh, it's interesting that we do have uh, Wisconsin uh, uh, represented on the opposing bench tonight. Morse, also a former head coach at Appleton East High School, and Dick Bennett, when he was a high school coach, knocked away by Grantham, picked up by Shaw. Dick Bennett, when he was a high school coach, coached against Morse when he was at Appleton. There's Grantham's first shot, and he hit it. He's a six-foot sophomore from Ypsilanti, Michigan, averages 11 points a game. He's a hard worker on offense for the Tigers. Points got a bust out. It's three on one. Oh, excellent quickness that time. But Timmy Nagley recovered and laid it in. Good job. Good hands by Nagley. Didn't get nervous. Regained his composure and tied the game. Yes, and I think we could see the real quickness of this Fort Hayes team. Uh, and uh, Stevens Point has been doing, except for about two times, has done a very good job of containing them. Soderberg doing a pretty good job on Raymond Lee, the sophomore out of Detroit, who's super quick. There's Edgar Eason, baseline move, laid it off for Willie Shaw, laid it up short. Who's got a rebound? Nate Rollins at 6'7". His shot will not go. This time, out of bounds, belongs to the Tigers. It's a problem for points, Steve. They've got to box them out. They can't allow them three or four shots. Yes, that's right, and that is a real problem inside, and we're seeing evidence of it there. An 8-8 tie at the 12-25 mark now, the first half. This is Lee and Soderberg, works against him. I don't have to tell you, points playing man defense. Here goes Edgar Eason inside, double pumped it in for a hoop, 10-8. They're looking to take the ball right to the basket, and that uh, is presenting a problem right now for the defense. Uh, there looks like they're making some adjustment uh, to try to seal what we call seal the seams or uh, prevent that penetration on the dribble. Well, Lazarsic had Nagley underneath that time, but decided against it. I'm sure the pointers are very well aware of the quick hands and quick bodies of these Tigers, and they're not going to make any pass unless they're darn sure the ball will get to their man. Yes, that's right. It's got to be a half-court game uh, for Stevens Point to win it. Soderberg thought about it, decided against it. Boy, that leaves quick. Yes, he is. Outstanding player. Both these teams... Uh, uh, are extremely well-balanced teams. They play both ends of the floor very well. Point very, very patient. I'll tell you one thing, it's almost a home court advantage tonight for Fort Hayes. Hayes, Kansas, not that far from Kansas City, and they got lots and lots of people here. Oh, Timmy Nagley with a nice move, but maybe intimidated a little bit and overlaid, and down with a rebound, and Raymond Lee looking to run. Pass to Grantham, just saves it from going out of bounds, and now the Tigers will bring it back out on top and start over. He stepped out of bounds, turnover. Grantham stepped out of bounds. Point will get it back, down 10-8. 10-8 to score, 11.02 to play, first half. More basketball in the national championship game in 60 seconds. A resource for our senior citizens to continue the learning process. We invite you to use this resource at our open house, Sunday, March 25th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Join us. You'll be surprised. Shooting percentages to this point in the basketball game. Stevens Point, 4-4-8 from the floor. Fort Hayes at 4-4-10 from the floor. The rebounding goes to Fort Hayes by 1-5-4. And Rollins, their big guy, Steve, has already jerked three boards here early in the first nine. He's a force inside. I know we, we don't want to beat rebounding into the ground, but maybe we ought to watch Point on the boards here for the next few minutes and see how they fare. Yes, they have to start neutralizing that uh, on the defensive boards. Craig Hawley, his first shot of the game. Hawley checked in at the timeout and hit one in a hurry. A very gutsy shot, wide open and hit nothing but net. It's a 10-10 tie, Hawley's first do, so Ray Lee might have carried the ball, no call. Here's Grantham in the corner, working against Jantz. He's got the shot on the way, it won't go. Shaw with a tip, foul a goal against Lazarsic. Saw 
had inside position on him, Steve. Yes. And Timmy went over his back. That's right. The uh, Fort Hayes is excellent on working on the inside, especially Shaw. He gets inside position. Here we have a classic example. It's uh, it's very difficult to get, to rebound from the outside position. Now Willie Shaw is not that big. He's a six-five inside player, but you can tell he's a strong guy. And you want to talk about jumpers? Well, you could do worse than to start with Willie Shaw. Well, he's extremely physical. He takes up a lot of space. Edgar Eason's shot won't go. Look who got another rebound. Nate Rollins, that one's blocked and finally reclaimed by Jantz. But boy, they're hitting the boards hard. Pointers got to get on the boards. 10-14 to play. 10-10 tie. National championship game. Kemper Arena, Kansas City. They're now uh, resting Grantham a little bit because they have uh, uh, number 30 replaced him in here, Joe Anderson. Uh, a little bit bigger at 6-4, playing the baseline of that 1-3 run now. Terry Lazarsik with the inbound pass, no problem to Jantz. Check on a substitution for you. Take a look at number 30, Joe Anderson for the Tigers. 6-4, a sophomore from Toledo, Ohio. One more turnover for Stevens Point. Anderson's the guy we talked about early, remember, who won the ball game last night with the last second shot. Nice give and go, and Edgar Eason laid it home. Great give and go. Eason could be a, a key factor here, too, because I think he is their best outside shooter on the club. Pointers with an advantage, but they decide to pull it out, and they'll do that a lot, Steve. They could take a three-on-one sometimes or a three-on-two break, but almost always they choose to pull the ball out, use the clock as well as hope to score. That's right. Tempo is very important to Stevens Point, and they must control the tempo of the game with their offense. They might even give up a basket on occasion or two in order to use some time. That's right, and there they are. They're getting an excellent shot inside. Timmy Lazarsik laid it home. Lazarsik in the scorebook. 12-12 a tie. 8.55 first half. That's what we have left here. This is Anderson. Oh, Jan's doing a good job. Almost with the steal is Hawley. Here goes Anderson. His shot brackets hard. Rollins got another rebound. Terry Porter knocked it away. Foul call. Foul call. Joe Anderson. It's Terry Porter. Very physical under the boards here. Porter Jeff. in a real scramble managed to get control of the ball with two Tigers all over him. And Anderson finally with a hack on the wrist. The whistle will go against him. Just the third team foul on Fort Hayes. First personal foul on Anderson. This is Hawley. Oh, Willie Shaw took it right away, and Timmy Lazarsic yeah, got it right back. Stepped right back for it. He left his feet on his pass, and he's got to watch that he doesn't do that because there's nothing he can do but come down with the ball. Hawley with a bad pass right at Terry Porter's feet and right out of bounds. Another turnover, Stevens Point, their sixth turnover in the first 11 plus minutes here of the first half. Turnover is always a factor, I guess, coach, but when you play like Point, turnover is more of a factor than it gets a run and shoot team, I think, like Fort Hayes. That's right. Here, uh, it's interesting, uh, Fort Hayes is going to try to delay the game a little bit and see if they can extend the defense out on the floor and open up uh, some penetration lanes here. They're extremely good at this. Uh, 10 penetrates from the sidelines, and they look inside for that uh, the big man cutting the baseline. They got the foul whistled, still a common foul. This is an interesting uh, change in uh, tactics. I've seen them do that in a couple of games here in the tournament, uh, and it doesn't, the situation really, as far as the scoreboard is concerned, doesn't seem to dictate when they go into that little stall. Well, I think they like to expand, uh, extend the defense. 12 12 our score, 7.47 to play. Back at Kemper in 60 seconds. A 12-12 basketball game with 7.47 to play in the first half. The Tigers from Fort Hayes, Kansas, have the basketball. They, for the basketball game to this point, 5 of 16 from the floor. Their shooting has not been good, but their rebounding has been awesome. And when they get shots like that, Coach, their shooting will improve a whole bunch. That really presents a big problem here, uh, the high-low pass, because of the size of Fort Hayes. Here's Terry Porter underneath Nagley. 
and he got his handle on it and finally laid it home. Had a tough time getting a handle That's on right. it. Kept himself under control, though, and did get the hoop. And did not travel. That was a very nice move by the freshman. This is Shaw looking underneath to Rollins. Somebody took the ball away from him. Soderbergh, and here comes Mike Jans. And then Raymond Lee playing a tough defense, as you could see on Jans. And Michael bouncing right off his foot, OB. Ford Hayes gets it right back. Well, it's another turnover. It's the seventh of the first half for Stevens Point. Ford Hayes has turned the ball over just two times. That's a big factor. The rebounding, nine for Ford Hayes, five for the Pointers. That foul may go against Willie Shaw over Tim Lazarsik's back. I believe it will. Joe Anderson, I'm not sure which. But there's Willie Shaw. Second personal foul on Willie Shaw. He'll get a seat here, and we'll get our first look for the Tigers. And Dan Lear, he wears number 40, 6'7", junior from Gladwin, Michigan. Averages eight points, four rebounds a game. A lot of players from Michigan on this Fort Hayes team, and for good reason. Coach Bill Morse has been at Fort Hayes, Steve. Of course, as you well know, only two years, and before that, he coached at Hillsdale, Michigan. Yes, it has had uh, Hillsdale down here in the tournament while he was the coach there. So he also has uh, tournament experience. It's interesting that they bring Rollins, their big guy, out so high and play that trapping zone defense. Terry Porter from the lane's got another 16-14. Pointers with a lead. Pointer. Porter has three five <laughs> three for five from the floor we got it straight 16 14 to score 605 to play pointers enjoy their first lead in a long time here's rollins he's looking inside he's got anderson baseline move drops it for lear he laid it in great inside passing they do this extremely well well they obviously want to take the ball inside because that's been their effort the last four or five times down the floor It's interesting that uh, Fort Hayes uh, did not uh, elect to continue with that delay game and uh, came right back and started to uh, play after their last time out. Lazarsik. Dribbles it back out for Jantz. Pointers will set back up. Terry Porter, high wide on the right, back out on top to Jantz. Soderberg, Porter. Sixteen, sixteen, five, ten to play. Tempo goes to point at yes, this point. Their offense is doing just what they'd like. And back out on top again. Here's Mike Chance. Well, the Fort Hayes fans now saying, "Hey, way to play the defense." But you could bet that Dick Bennett is saying, "Way to play the offense." We don't mind this a bit. That's right, because that's definitely their game and their style. And I think when you see them shake loose, they'll either be inside or at the weak side of the free throw line extended. Uh, for the good shot. Oh, Terry might have walked. There it is no right call. here, right here at the weak side of the foul lane. Jan shot wouldn't go. Lazarsik with an offensive board, and now we'll start over. And I think you'll see them work for the same type of shot, uh, either Terry Porter on the baseline or inside in the lane, or one of the guards from the weak side. Got Terry out a little bit higher now. Here's Jantz from the corner, decided against it. He'll bring it back out on top to Soderberg. Soderberg. Excellent patience, just excellent patience. There's that weak side, weak side, oh, and there he is in by the Terry. He took it to the hole, drew the foul on Rollins, tried to bank it home, shot would not go, but he did draw the foul on Nate Rollins, his second personal foul. Terry's going to pump fake and get the ball right into the lane here for a great shot, putting pressure on and a chance for the three-point play. He came close. Hoop would not have the ball, but Porter will go to the free throw line to shoot two. He has been amazing from the line in the tournament. 27 of 30, 90% from the free throw line for the tournament on the season. As you can see, he is an 83% free throw shooter. 17, 16, point by one. Steve, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right there. I'm just saying, and the fine free throwing uh, continues. Good look at the junior guard forward from Milwaukee. What a great player. I'll tell you this. Well, I'll tell you after we have timeout. It's 18-16, pointers by two, 4.05 to play. Back in a minute. 
give you all the way. Irv's Marina on Main Street in Stevens Point. McDonald's Hamburger Restaurants in Stevens Point and Wisconsin Rapids. 5110 Family Restaurant and Best Western Royale Motel open 24 hours. And Sports Specialties on 2nd Street in Stevens Point. The teams stop here. Support these Stevens Point boosters. They support the pointers. Steve, to this point, we can divide the game into two very separate parts, statistically anyway. Stevens Point with a huge edge shooting, 8 for 14 from the floor, Fort Hayes 7 of 18. But on the other side, Fort Hayes gets a big edge in rebounding and also turnovers. Uh, I don't know. Give me your thoughts. What do you think? We've played almost a half, 16 minutes. Well, I think uh, uh, Stevens Point has to do a little bit better job of handling the quickness of the Fort Hayes guards. Uh, that's a few two-minute turnovers, and I think uh, Coach Bennett is probably a little concerned about that. Willie Shaw back into the game, as you can see, the inbound man to Raymond Lee, the sophomore from Detroit. Soderberg with a defensive assignment on Lee. Oh, might have been an offensive foul. There was no call. Boy, I'll tell you, Raymond Lee got his elbow out there pretty good that time. He sure did. Edgar Eason looking inside. Here comes Lee again, working against Soderberg. Put the shot up, put it in. He's a little bit bigger and probably can jump better than Brad. He has six now, Raymond Lee in the game. It's an 18 tie at 3.39 to play in the first half. Fort Hayes guards have been very aggressive on defense. Again, let's see if we can watch and see if they can control the uh, tempo of the game with their offense and get the shot for Porter at the weak side of the free throw line extended or in the paint. You know, one thing that Dick Bennett talked about with me, Coach, before the uh, semifinals is the fact that a lot of teams, as we see Dave Schlund into the game for the first time, a lot of teams will rest on defense. His players get their rest on offense. Yes, I think that's uh, often true of the teams that really emphasize the defense. Jantz inside, looked for Nagley, not a good pass. Eason knocked it away, and there was a terrible pass by Eason right to Brad Soderberg. Well, they looked to run, they looked to go deep, and that time it turned into a point. Just, uh, Brad Soderberg really hustling back on defense. In perfect position to make that steal. 18-18, 2.40 to play, first half. Jantz, Rollins looking to draw a charge that time on Terry Porter, there was no whistle. Again, very patient. Ooh. That's another bad pass, and who's going to get the foul? It'll go against Eason. Soderbergh's fine. That was a tough pass, and with the quickness of Fort Hayes that we've talked about, it's a pass, Steve, that's not going to work most times. That's right. They're really laying back in there and watching for that cross-court pass. They're extremely lucky that wasn't picked off. Sixth team foul on Fort Hayes, so a point not in the bonus. They'll march to the free throw line, though, from this point on here in the first half. 2.27 to play. Substitutions, Lazarsik comes back in and Schlund out quickly. And Craig Hawley will come back in. And Mike Jantz will go out. Now, while the pointers now really give up some size at the guard spot, with Jantz at 6'3 going out and Hawley at about 5'11 coming in. Yes, well, I think Coach Bennett's making a very good move here, uh, trying to keep the players as fresh as possible. Uh, this has been a long, grueling tournament, by far the most grueling tournament in the nation, and uh, uh, he's trying to keep his players as fresh as possible. It really is awesome when you consider we go through 32 basketball teams in the space of a week and finally uh, declare a champion with every game played here on the same floor. That's right. It's just a, a really an endurance contest uh, as you get later in the week. The tournament format, of course, changed this year with a day off on Sunday and then the semifinals last night, the Monday, and the championship game on Tuesday. The hope was that the tournament's semis and finals would draw better, although I'm not sure that that has happened. Last night's crowd, frankly, not good at all, less than 5,000. Shots in the air and out of bounds, bounce off the NBA shot clock at the top of the board, and that will be out of bounds up and over the backboard. So I think Terry was a little over anxious trying uh, to rush his shot just a bit on that. 150 to play, first half, it's an 18-18 tie. Five, nope. Soderberg is doing a great job on Lee, and he's not backing off him either, coach. He's playing right up in his face. Yes, he is. Reggie Grantham, shot won't go. Who's got a rebound? Tim Nagley. Very strong rebound inside. Well, Nagley's gonna be a good one, 6'7", freshman. Started 
with the River Falls game late in the season. The Pointers have not lost since Nagley and Jantz became starters. Pointers working on a school record 18 game winning streak coming into this one tonight. Here's, Here's Terry. Side. Oh wow, that may have been one he could have shot. Well, he, he knows when to pull the trigger most of the time. Terry thought about a 10-footer and decided to bring it back out on top. Well, that's a mark of the great player. He knows when he has his shot and when he doesn't. And now Dick Bennett wants one, and so the pointers will definitely bring it on and wind down the last 45 seconds here of the first half, try to take the two-point lead to halftime. This is very good strategy, particularly with them in the uh, zone defense. Not that much pressure on the ball, and uh, I'm sure Coach Bennett wants to go into the locker room with no worse than a tie. 20 seconds to play, first half. 18-18 is our score. We knew it wouldn't be a high-scoring game. Oh, Lazarsik, oh, oh. Lazarsik's working inside. It's got to go in. It won't. Nagley got a tip. Who's got a rebound? Terry put it up left-handed and put it home. Five seconds to play, point leads by two. Here comes Raymond Lee from a long ways away. It won't go, and point claims the lead at halftime on a great effort by Terry Porter. We talk about rebounding in Fort Hayes' favor, coach, and then right at the end of the half, the pointers come up with the big board That's and the big right. move. Lazarsik uh, maybe went a little too early. Here it is, Lazarsik took the shot, maybe with about eight seconds left. Nagley had a tip. Porter finally got control. He put it home with his left, left hand. hand. What a player, Terry Porter. Back with halftime from Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri in just two minutes. 20 to 18, point a leader by two, 20 minutes to play. Point will own the ball to start the second half. It'll be Lazarsik in the middle. Nagley will play up front along with Terry Porter. Soderberg and Jantz are the guards. I see no changes either for the Tigers from Fort Hayes. They'll go up front with Raymond Lee and Reggie Grantham. Check it, those are the two guards. Willie Shaw, Nate Rollins, and the other man up front is double E, Edgar Eason. We play 20 seconds in point, looking to make it a four-point lead. Remember, the biggest lead in this game by either team, just two. Point has led by two on a couple of occasions, and it's been a two-point lead, the biggest, for Fort Hayes. They're staying with their 1-3-1 zone defense, and it looks like that's going to be the defense they're going to count on to try to uh, uh, keep the pointers in check. Why, Coach, would Bill Morris for Fort Hayes not try to play some man defense? They definitely have a quicker basketball team. And that's true, but I think uh, they're very concerned about the patience of the point offense, and uh, they are extremely patient on uh, uh, their man-for-man -man offense. And uh, I think they're also maybe trying to uh, prevent that penetration. Terry Porter with the first hoop for the second half, and the pep band man from the pointers liked it. Terry now with 10 in the game to lead all scores. But check it, Terry now with 12, 10 at halftime, remember. 22-18, a four-point lead. It's the biggest lead of the game. But Tarshik doing a very good job of forcing the ball out on top again and forcing the offense away from the basket. Inside pass that time, looking to dump it underneath to Rollins, who's their man inside. Good job of fronting that time by Tim Nagley. That's right, and again, they came out and looked for uh, Rollins, which I thought they might try to do, get him into their offense. Underneath, Lazarsik. Oh, Hoop wouldn't have it. He had a good shot. Bennett not happy at all. Coach Dick Bennett very unhappy that Tim Lazarsik took that shot. Here's Rollins with another rebound, his sixth of the game. Here he is with his seventh rebound, and this time he got the rebound, the hoop, and drew the foul. Very strong effort by Terry, er, by Rollins on that. Uh, just extremely, uh, would not give up on that ball. A little short on his first shot, knew it was short, went right back after it, and of course drew the foul and the three-point play uh, possibility. Nagley with the personal foul, just Nagley's first personal foul. 22-20, a two-point pointer lead. Rollins at the free throw line will shoot one, his first of the night, and it's a honey. Well, he shot free throws pretty well here in the tournament. He did not shoot well throughout the season from the free throw line. Put Rollins in the book, though, for a three-point play there, and five points on the night. He has his team within one, 22-21. Now we see them going to their man for man. 
Brent Soderberg is just getting mauled out there. Porter working on Edgar Eason and beat him to the hoop, and Eason fouled him. This could uh, end up uh, backfiring if they don't uh, uh, reduce their fouls because that could put uh, uh, point on the foul line. Of course, they're extremely dangerous when they get there. That's a second foul on Eason. And Fort Hayes now will zone it off the out-of-bounds play, and I guess looks like they're going to stay zone here, Steve. Stay with their 1-3-1, one, one. that's correct. They're trying, uh, as you can see, Lee playing the passing lane, trying to cut down the reversing of the basketball uh, quickly to the weak side so that uh, uh, the baseline man, in this case Anderson, number 30, is able to get corner to corner to try to eliminate that uh, quick shot from the baseline. Soderberg looking to go to Jantz that time, and Raymond Lee with those quick hands got a hand on it and Mike just let it go out of bounds. Dick Bennett has been on his feet here for most of the second half. Now they're back to their man for man. They zoned only because it was out of bounds underneath the basket. Turnover pointers. Soderbergh's pass would not find Terry Porter. And now Fort Hayes can reclaim the lead. Well, two times down the floor, Stevens Point has not been effective. They have not turned it over nine times in the game. Yes, yeah, so they're overplaying the passing lanes, and I think the Stevens Point's going to have to look to penetrate uh, with the basketball. Here's Anderson, Joe Anderson, number 30. He's 6'4". Oh, Jantz let him go. Foul called, shot won't go. Jantz got the foul. Chippy little foul, but a good call. He definitely touched him. Jantz thinking that time that Anderson was going to try to bring the ball back out on top, Steve, and went to play that pass, but we'll see. Jantz just on the wrong side there. Anderson. Yes, and he did reach in uh, for the foul. Shot wouldn't go, but Anderson will move to the free throw line. He'll shoot two for the season from the line. Anderson, 53% free throw shooter. 33% to this point in the tournament. Sometimes those stats are misleading because when it comes to the big game, uh, uh, teams often rise to the occasion. Well, we may have this stat right on. <laughs> The way it looks, he's two of seven now for the tournament from the line. He looks a little tentative up there at the line right now. Maybe doesn't have his confidence. Second one is good. 22-22. It's a tie at the 16-40 mark. Point, remember, led by four. Fort Hayes has scored now four straight. They're staying with that man-for-man -man pressure, overplaying the passing lanes. Soderberg working against Raymond Lee. No place to go. Looking for help. Knocked out of bounds. Another turnover. Stevens point number 10. And they're shaky here, coach, in the first, well, three and a half minutes of the second half. Yes, they're uh, really overplaying and trying to get uh, Stevens point to take the quick shot. Uh, a good move by Coach uh, Morris, I think. And Grayson, nice reversal, laid it home. Two-point lead, Fort Hayes. They've scored six straight. Extremely important uh, possession, I think, here for uh, Stevens Point. Coach Bennett's going to take the time. Timeout Porters. Timeout TV 13. We'll be back at Kemper Arena with a two-point lead in favor of Fort Hayes. Way, Irv's Marina on Main Street in Stevens Point. McDonald's Hamburger Restaurants in Stevens Point and Wisconsin Rapids. 5110 Family Restaurant and Best Western Royale Motel open 24 hours. And Sports Specialties on 2nd Street in Stevens Point. The teams stop here. Support these Stevens Point boosters. They support the pointers. Coach, you've just been given a really telling statistic here by Walt McAlexander, our stat man. Nate Rollins, seven rebounds in the game, five of them off the offensive board, and that tells you a big, big story. It's uh, quite evident that he's going to try to get himself involved in the offense and involved in the game in the second half. Pointers now, remember, we're in a situation similar to this last night. They did not play well in the first few minutes of the second half, but they were able to break out of it, and they could use a basket right here. Good timeout by Coach Bennett. They look like they have themselves a little bit more collected on their offense. Here's Terry Porter. He's working against Eason. Back out on top to Soderberg. 
Soderberg looking for help. Ray Lee's on him. Almost a five call. Got it to Hawley. This is Nagley and back out on top to Craig. Zarsik with Nate Rollins on him. Looking at another five second call. There was none oh, made. He took it to the hoop and laid it home. Good heads up move. Timmy Lazarsik. He has had a great tournament. I, in my opinion, he's just played uh, excellent basketball. It's very hard to fault him uh, in any game this uh, in Kansas City. Four points in the game for Lazarsik. Good heads up move there. Inside pass. Eason knocked out of bounds by Hawley, but he couldn't reclaim it, and the Tigers will own it under their own hoop. Substitutions. Reggie Grantham, who was a starter at the guard spot, number 20 right there, will come back in for the Tigers. Joe Anderson will get a seat front row. And Mike Jantz, who was starter for point at guard, back in. And out of the game, Brad Soderberg. Again, Coach Bennett, I think, trying to keep his men as fresh as possible, especially the guards who are under a lot of pressure. Here's Raymond Lee working against Hawley. Oh, my, did he hit a tough shot. Raymond Lee. Lee, four of six from the floor in the game for eight points, and he looked mighty good on that one. Yeah. He's got a steal, but Craig got it right back. Yes, he, uh, early in the game, uh, he was going and playing, uh, penetrating with the ball. It looks like he's trying to do the same thing now. Well, you saw the official make the call. Here it is, Coach, toughest call in basketball, and I don't know if I'd have to buy that one or not. Well, it's a tough call, and there definitely was contact, so a call had to be made. 26, 24, Ford Hayes by two, 14.30 to play for the national championship. Here's Eason, right in front of our position with Porter on him. Back out on top to Grantham. He's looking to go against Jan. Slip held control. Where's he got the ball? He's got it out of bounds off Terry Porter's foot, I believe. Tigers still hold possession. Well, you could just tell now, not that the game wasn't intense early, but the intensity level has just picked up. I think both these teams now realize every time they touch the ball is so important. Yes, this is an excellent uh, championship game. Both teams playing as hard as they possibly can. Our first look now at number 22, Ron Morse for the Tigers. He's the coach's son. He's a 6'2 guard. He won't shoot much. He'll run the offense for Fort Hayes. They've gone to a 1-4 offense now, trying to uh, get the ball inside if possible. Near steal, yep. dribbled it right out of bounds. Gotta be yellow ball. You got it, point will own it. There's Raymond Lee, who took it out of bounds, got his feet tangled up. The head coach for the Tigers, there you see the play. Well, it looked like Soderberg, who fell down, and then Lee just fell right over him. You can't call a foul on Brad, I don't think. No, Lee is uh, also uh, panning pretty hard. Uh, he's been playing awfully hard, and he looked to me like he's just a little bit tired. We'll see if his intensity remains on defense this time. 26-24, Fort Hayes by two. Pointers need a hoop to tie. 13-45 to play for the title. Zarsik out high. Leave it in favor of Soderberg. Terry Porter looking for a lob that time. There was no pass. Here's Timmy Nagley with a tough shot. He makes it home. Tie game at 26. Nagley's a poised young man for a freshman, isn't he? He uh, doesn't look like a freshman, and I think with his experience, uh, we'd have to call him a, a veteran at this point. This is Morse. Inside pass to Rollins. Chased it down in the corner. Lazar six on him. Rollins left him for a second. Timmy Nagley. Timmy Nagley tried to pick up the defense when Tim Lazarsik left Rollins. Nagley got the foul, his second personal, and Rollins will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Here we see him, I think, hitting him maybe a little with the body. I don't believe he got him with his hand. Rollins back to the free throw line is two for two in the game to this point. One for one, check it. He converted the three-point play a little earlier, remember. Free throws a honey. Only a 62% free throw shooter on the year, but coach, as you mentioned, when it's a championship game, it's a new season. Yeah, that's right, and uh, while stats will give you uh, some sort of a tendency, uh, you can throw them out the window for a championship game. 28-26, at two free throws, have his team back by two. Jance now works against Morse. It's been Lee and Soderberg all the way. That's been a good matchup. It looks to me like uh, the pointers are adjusting to that pressure just a little bit better. 
with their offense. Mike Jantz now has a little bit of size on number 22, Ron Morris. Morris only 6'2", the sophomore guard who just checked in. And Jantz that time posted him up a little bit, coach baseline, and put the jumper right over him. They got their shot on the baseline. Points a baseline shooting team, and they got it. Here goes Ed Greason. Nice dump pass to Nate Rollins, and he laid it home. Excellent play by Fort Hay. Just excellent penetration that time. 6 points in the basketball game now for Nate Rollins. They lead by 2, 30-28, 12-18 to play in the title game. Nagley's underneath. Oh, I thought it was going to come out and it rolled home. Excellent back cut. He got the uh, defensive man uh, caught him when he wasn't watching him and slipped under the basket. Beautifully uh, done. Just tell that ball to go straight through. I can't stand that <laughs> sitting on the rim there. It's a tie game again at 30 to 30. Here's Rollins. Oh, he might have walked. There was no call. He laid it in. Looked like he may have shuffled the feet a little bit. He didn't. 11 officially now in the book for Nate Rollins. And he's coming on in the second half, just what we uh, suspected might happen. Ford Hayes by two, 32-30, 11.40 to play here in a championship game. Steve Stevens with Jim Crandall live at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri to decide the winner of the NAIA. Yeah. Timmy Lazarsic took it to the hoop all by himself. Well, now, another thing, spectacular play. One thing we might talk about, Coach, is Nate Rollins wears that knee brace. He, he is limping a little bit right now. He's got a bad knee, and it looks like Lazarsic can get a step on him and take it right past him. The foul whistled underneath on Brad Soderberg. He did not believe he fouled him and may have come very close to receiving the wrath of the referee in that particular case. Well, the referees realize that this is a uh, very tense ball game, and I think uh, they realize the emotions. 32-32 a tie. More of the national finals in 60 seconds. Five deep. 32, 32, it's a tie. You saw the time remaining, 11-14 to play here in the championship game. Field goal percentage here in the half. Both teams shooting very well, .6 of seven. Ford Hayes, five of eight here in the second half. Oh, Reggie Grantham. They set that up well. Yes, they had that set up out of bounds and uh, at their timeout, beautiful backdoor play. 34-32, again it's a two-point lead for the Tigers from Hayes, Kansas. And now we see them back in their 1-3-1 zone, changing their defense after the timeout. I think this will uh, maybe help uh, the pointers uh, get a little bit more control. There'll be less pressure on the ball, and I think their offense might even control the game just a little bit more. But I know that drive by Lasarsic uh, didn't uh, uh, make Coach Morris uh, uh, very happy. Ten and a half minutes to play. Terry baseline back out on top to Jans. Here's Soderberg, Nagley. Jans, pump fake, took it to the hole, dumped it off to Terry Lasarsic. He laid it in. Just a beautiful job. Beautiful uh, patience on that. Lazarsic has nine in the game, and again, we have a tie here. 34-34, 10 minutes of basketball left to play. Now we're going to see a stall uh, out here a little bit, trying to uh, extend the pointer defense out on the floor a little bit and open up uh, the basket area a little more. Well, now we start looking for backdoor cuts, I suppose, Coach, huh? Yes, I think that uh, you're going to see them try to use their quickness and penetrate and then... Uh, uh, slip somebody into the basket on the backside. Now they've gone, changed their offense again. Very well coached team, uh, Ford Hayes. Who's got the ball? Jantz almost forced a turnover, but Lee picked it up. He laid it off to Rollins. He couldn't get the shot. Foul, call, travel call inside. The walk was called against Rollins. I thought I think there was the ball gonna... was pinned against the board. Yes, there it was. He lost control and brought it back down. A good call by the official. Pointer basketball, 34-34. They can take the lead here with a hoop. We approach the nine-minute mark of the national championship game. I think it's interesting for the fans to notice how the tempo now has changed uh, since uh, the defense was changed by Fort Hayes. I think... Uh, the pointers are going to take good advantage of this and let their offense really control the tempo here a little bit. 
They'll be very patient, I think, and take the shot they want. Soderberg runs the show from out on top. Jantz is the other guard. It's Terry Porter and Nagley at the forward spots, and Tim Lazarsik is the center. For the Tigers, they go with Lee at one guard spot. Grantham is a guard, but he plays the baseline spot on this particular defense. The other men on the floor are Edgar Eason, near steal there by Lee. Here goes Terry Porter. Here goes Terry, hit it! Beautiful shot. And that makes the control of the ball with the offense just twice as tough when you end up with the basket at the end of it. Terry has 12, point leads by two. Oh, now there is... I don't, well, there's a foul call. Foul against Lazarsik. Second foul and sixth team foul on Stevens Point. The team fouls are six to one, which uh, is now uh, getting to be a bit of a serious factor. We'll have a timeout with the score 36 for the Pointers and 34 for the Tigers. We have 8-11 to play here in Kemper Arena. A lot of our teaching at UW-Stevens Point is hands-on experience. Point students profit from sensitive, personal attention. They also get specialized training for tomorrow's professions. You'd be surprised at what you can do with a little expert help from us. What do you really know about UW-Stevens Point? Write us for more information. You'll be surprised. Field goal shooting now this half. Stevens Point, eight of nine from the floor. Fort Hayes, six of nine from the floor. Romance, intrigue, excitement. Find it all at Stevens Point. <laughs> Gotta be a Chamber of Commerce man here with a banner at Kemper Arena. Right in front of our broadcast position, we'll watch now. Ray Lee throw the ball into Nate Rollins. Lee has it back in Soderberg, as has been the case all through this game. We'll pick him up on defense. Here goes Reggie Grantham now. We haven't heard much from Mr. Grantham to this point in the game, Steve, and he's been a big scorer for them, 11 a game all throughout the season. Yes, that's true. He's really uh, been working hard on defense on the baseline of that 1-3-1, one, one, and uh, it may have affected him uh, offensively. Although they've got a great defensive player on him, uh, Jans is just doing a superb job again tonight shutting him down. This is Lear now, number 40, who's checked back in. There goes Edgar Eason, and Terry knocked it away from him, and Stevens Point's got the ball. There's a two-point lead with 7.35 to play in the basketball game. Now it will be interesting to see if they stay with the 1-3 run zone because uh, uh, Point now has the lead, and I think you're going to see them be even more uh, deliberate with the ball. 12 turnovers now. There's a foul whistled against Raymond Lee. That's still only the second team foul on Fort Hayes. But you know, Coach, that the fact they don't have many team fouls could work against them late in the game if they have to foul. That certainly they, is true. They won't be able to put point at the line unless they do, you know, a lot of hacking before that point. That should certainly happen, and maybe they're uh, sensing that now. But I see they're still staying with that 1-3-1 one, one, uh, zone. And uh, they did get the lead with their man for man, so I'm a little bit baffled at this point to see why they're doing this. This is Jantz, Soderberg, Terry. 15-foot baseline jumper, Terry nothing, Porter. Nothing but net, just uh, solid as a rock. 14 for Terry, timeout, Ford Hayes. Pointers lead by four. 6.52 to play back in Kansas City in 60 seconds. Cooper Motors, your Pontiac, Oldsmobile, and Buick dealer in Stevens Point. E.O. Johnson Company, serving North Central Wisconsin. Point Brewery, brewers of Point Special Beer. Century Insurance, with Century All's Well, even when all isn't. True Value, the more you've got to do, the more you need True Value Hardware Stores. And the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, home of the Pointers. Attendance at tonight's championship game, 7,779 here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City. 38-34 is our score. Terry Porter hit the big baseline jumper, and Mr. Morris, the coach on the Fort Hayes bench, said, we better talk about it, boys. Anything that you could see right off the hand, uh, right off the bat here, coach, they may have changed? 
they look to go inside apparently again to Rollins and they're it going to their all American all. there's no question about it at this time Rollins with a little six footer has 13 now in the game and it's 38 36 two point lead Stevens point yeah, Stevens Point, there are uh, three critical times in the ball game to me. The uh, first five minutes of both the first half and the second half, and the last five minutes of the game, and they're getting the lead uh, uh, point is at the right time. If they can maintain that now, down through the five-minute mark, it's going to uh, make it yeah, that much more difficult on uh, on Fort Hayes because the clock becomes a factor. Well, Coach Morse has gone back now to the man defense. Foul whistled against Reggie Grantham away from the ball. Still only the third team foul, just the first personal on Reggie Grantham. But they are going back to man defense, Steve. Yes, that's, a, and I think, a very good move on Coach Morris's part. Uh, they got themselves the lead with the man for man, and I think that's what they're going to have to do here. Now they'll play zone here now out of bounds. Coaches just don't like to play man out of bounds. No, they? it's too easy to get burned. That's a very dangerous spot to have possession of the ball. But they picked up man for man now. They just didn't uh, zone the inbounds pass. Oh, Reggie Grantham. Just put Soderberg on the floor with a forearm shiver. Uh, second personal foul on Reggie Grantham. Fourth team foul now on Fort Hayes. Brad Soderberg went to the floor hard and everybody talking to Reginald Grantham saying, well, here we might be able to get a look at it. Yeah, see, uh, he really ran him over. There's no question about that. Got the elbow out a little bit, but it did not look as intentional as I first thought. Well, Lazarsik managed to throw the basketball in bounds at the very last second, and fortunately for Stevens Point, it bounced off one of the Tigers, and the Pointers still own it. Yes, uh, Lazarsik had a man open, but didn't spot him right away. That'll be a blocking foul called against Raymond Lee. And now I wonder, Steve, if perhaps the officials looking at that foul on Reggie Grantham don't want to get control of the game and make sure they're in charge. Yes, because uh, the tension is very tight in here. You can almost cut it with a knife now. Second personal foul on Lee, fifth team foul. Pointers inbound this time with no problem. Terry Porter's in control with Edgar Eason on him. 5.40 to play in the game, 38-36, Stevens Point. There, oops, there's Terry. He's got Easton posted oh. up. He put it in with, with his left, left hand. hand, Terry Porter. 16 for Porter, and some of them have been beautiful to see. There Whoa. goes Lee, and Timmy Lazarsik looking for the block, got most of Lee's head that time. He's all right. He's up in a walk to the free throw line. Foul against, again, Tim Lazarsik. Here's a replay on it, coach. Yes. Uh, he, uh, I think uh, we're seeing that uh, Fort Hayes is really presenting the most problems for uh, Stevens Point when uh, Lee is penetrating with the basketball. Uh, they seem to uh, get, make something good happen every time that happens. Raymond Lee, a 78% free throw shooter on the season, will shoot two here. Good foul in this case. Six of eight from the line to this point. Now make it seven of nine for the Tigers. It's a three-point lead, 40-37, 5.15 to play. And now we have Terry Porter, coach, bringing the ball up the floor, something we haven't seen to this point in the game. Yeah, so he's extremely cool, and he's got the size, 6'3", and uh, can see over those uh, smaller guards, and that's a big factor at this point. I think you're going to see the ball in Terry's hands an awful lot. Uh, in my opinion... Uh, which uh, it maybe isn't worth much. Uh, I think he really should be the MVP of the tournament. He just had a great, great tournament. Foul whistled against Lazarsik. He was pivoting. Tra traveling, I believe, Jim. He did. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant a travel, not a foul. Tim Lazarsik, you bet. 11 turnovers now against Stevens Point. Dick Bennett on one end of the floor. Morse on the other end. Well, that key time has been passed. The pointers still have the lead, so we'll see now what happens. 40-37, the lead is only three. 4.30 to play in the game. Dick Bennett and Jerry Gotham now both on their feet. You want to talk tension, everybody. I hope you can feel it coming through your TV. Inside pass to Rollins. Knocked out of bounds. Belongs to point. A big turnover there, and now Stevens Point has to start making them pay, not only with uh, points, 
but taking a little time because time uh, again starts to be a little bit of a factor. Here comes Soderberg. He's working against a very triple good, team. Very good, very good. Oh, Lazarsik had Nagley underneath, decided against it. One of those instances, I guess, where we'd rather run time off that, the clock than score two points. That's right. Even if they don't get points here, they have to make the clock hurt just a little bit more. And Point does that extremely well. Uh-oh. Oh. Lee with a steal. He's got Soderberg to beat. Brad let him go. He laid it in. It's a one-point game, 40 to 39. And I think a break there because uh, the official was screened. Uh, and I think uh, Soderberg probably uh, was fouled just a little bit there. Ten points for Lee after that hoop. 40-39. Pointers by one. Here's Nagley. We're under three and a half minutes to play. Soderberg works against Lee. Here's Chance. I Reggie think Coach uh, wants a timeout right now. There and there it is. Good call. Timeout by the pointers. We'll keep it right here. Dick Bennett wanting to talk about things. Terry Porter's had a great basketball game. He is 7 of 10 from the floor. He's played very, very well. He has 16 points and point nurses. And I mean nurses. A one-point lead coach, 40-39. 314 to play. What do we look for from this point for Stevens Point? I'm sure patience. Will they put it in the freeze, I guess, would be one question a lot of fans would ask. Well, I don't think they can afford to put it into a complete freeze, no, uh, and I don't think they're trying to do that. Uh, it's interesting that, again, uh, uh, Fort Hayes is getting back into the game with their uh, uh, aggressive man-for-man -man play, and I suspect they'll keep doing that, certainly until they get the lead. Well, there you There's saw the replay, and I'll tell you what, Ray Lee got a lot of Brad Soderberg's arm that time. That's right, and it was obvious it was right in front of us, and uh, but the official didn't see it because uh, he was behind the play, and it wasn't his fault. Uh, but that uh, happens sometimes in a big ball game. Stevens Point, 10 of 11 from the floor here in the second half. You can see the time remaining in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Ford Hayes, 8 of 11 from the floor. Point has not been to the free throw line here in the second half. Ford Hayes, 5 of 7 from the line. Turnover's about even, 4 for the pointers, 3 for the Tigers. Again, those second half statistics. We're under 3.10 to play. Nagley and Lazarsik. And Fort Hayes continues in their man-for-man -man defense. Knocked away. Who's got it? Got to be a walk. Got to be. Yes. Travel call. Good Raymond call. Lee. An excellent call by the official. He made a great call there. Well, the pointers had the ball taken away. I think the man who knocked it away was Edgar Eason, knocked it away from Terry Porter, and it went right to Raymond Lee, but Lee couldn't keep his balance, fell down, and it was an obvious travel. Yes, uh, very quick hands on by the Fort Hayes players, so uh, the pointers will have to be very uh, careful and uh, protect that ball. Here's Terry Porter in the corner. He works against Ed Eason. Spin move. Terry wants to shoot it. Oh, oh did he hit a tough shot? Yeah, what a great shot. Yes. I'm saying, I think Coach Bennett was probably saying, no, 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 great shot on that one. 19 for Terry in the game. Again, it's a three-point lead, 42-39. Here's Reggie Grantham. He leaves it for Eason, who lays it over the rim. Again, a one-point pointer lead. 2.15 to play second half. Nine in the game for Edgar Eason for the Tigers from Fort Hayes in Hayes, Kansas. Plenty of time. Two minutes exactly to play in the national championship game. Point players all standing, every one on his feet. Jantz is wide open from 10. It's and in! Got, oh, what a... My heart stopped on that one, Jim. I don't mind telling you. Six for Jantz, 44-41. Here goes Raymond Lee. Shot will not go, but he did draw the foul, I believe, against Lazarsik. And again, an, uh, an instance where Lee penetrating uh, makes things happen. The foul does go against Lazarsik. That's four now, coach, on Tim Lazarsik. With a minute 35 to play, it could be a factor. Look at this ball. Yes. Just kiss that rim three times. What a super tough shot. Great touch by Mike Jans. 
Porter has hit six straight and 10 of 12 in the game. Free throw will not go. That foul looks a little better right now uh, because uh, if, if they get the ball back here, they may have the two-point lead, which is a three-point lead, which would be very important. Two-point lead. 44, 42, 134, 133. 130 to play in a basketball game. Nagley wouldn't go in. Nate Rollins has a rebound. The Tigers can tie. 120 to play. Point leads by two. Ray Lee working Excellent against Soderbergh. Excellent defense by Soderbergh. Oh, yes. Very Stevens good. Point now I think now. they'll want to take a little time off the clock. Well, now we don't have to shoot anymore, Coach. We. <laughs> Stevens Point doesn't have to shoot anymore. Oh, oh no. Good. Eason took it away from Porter and laid it in. The game is tied. Timeout, Fort Hayes. Timeout, Fort Hayes. We'll stay here. Well, it's a great steal by Eason. Eason stole it and laid it home. The game is tied, 44-44, 52 seconds to play. Boy, what great reach, what quick hands by Edgar Eason. Yes, he, uh, he's made two or three great plays, and uh, that was one of his biggest tonight. You know what the mistake may have been, though, Coach, on the other end of the floor, even though it didn't result directly in a basket, was Timmy Nagley going to the hoop in the sequence just before this with only about two passes and he thought he had a layup but he didn't hit it it cost point possession and eventually it cost him two points and they were not able to run any time off the clock yes that's true but it's awfully hard to fault uh, someone with that great a shot I think he thought he had it but uh, you're right here the clock is very important it may be interesting to see how uh, Coach Bennett elects to play this because uh, they could go for the score right away or they could try to hold on and being the great foul shooters there are, uh, uh, go for the last shot uh, or for the foul. I'm gonna put you on the spot now, Coach, because we'll get the answer in a second, but are you guessing zone or more man defense for Fort Hayes? Well, Fort Hayes has to man, in my opinion. Uh, if they sit back in the zone, uh, unless it's some sort of a, a trapping zone, uh, I think uh, definitely the pointers will get the last shot. Well, there's an impressive graphic right there that tells the whole story of how these two teams have shot the basketball from the floor. We have 50 seconds to play. Pointers have it inbounded to Mike Jans. Soderberg in control. Reggie Grantham is on him. Here comes Michael. Michael's got the ball in the front court. Lazarsik left it for Terry Porter. 40 seconds to play in the game. That's right, and they're, we're seeing them hold the ball here. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Bennett decides to run it down to about uh, 12, 15 seconds before calling a timeout and going for the last shot. 30 seconds to play, 25 seconds to play in a basketball game, 20 now. And I think there you'll see they're going to go for the last shot. And I don't think he's going to call the timeout. Well, yes, he you're did. 0 for 1, Steve. <laughs> Well, he waited a little bit long to, to do that. Only 10 seconds, but uh, uh, he may have a special play set up for this out of bounds. 44-44, 10 seconds left to play. The winner will be the national champion. 10 seconds left to play in regulation. Overtime, certainly a very distinct possibility at this point. Coach, if I'm Dick Bennett, I gotta get the ball to Terry Porter, tell him to work, put it up, maybe hit it if not draw the foul he's proven he can work against edgar eason yes but i'm sure he'll have some backup uh, uh the pointers have played so well and they're such a team oriented uh, team that uh, they may want terry to take the shot but i think if terry is being double uh, uh teamed whatever he'll find the open man and uh every pointer on the floor can uh, can shoot terry in this half five of five from the floor he has hit six straight in the game and for this basketball game he is 10 of 12 shooting the ball from the floor it'll be interesting to see the strategy i think fort hayes has to pick them up man for man they can't afford anybody an open shot at the basket all right well we'll show you what's going to happen 10 seconds left to play 44 44 it's a tie game nagley to inbound it for the pointers he's got it into jams and here comes 
That's Soderberg. There it is. Here's Terry. He took it with a lot of time left. It's off. Rollins with a rebound. Two seconds left. Timeout with one second, second left, left to play. One second left to play. Ford Hayes will have a chance to win it in regulation. Well, Terry Porter took a tough shot, Coach, with probably a few too many seconds left. Yes, although it's hard to fault him. Uh, he, he doesn't have the advantage of sitting here and watching the time click off, and it's uh, hard to count to yourself. Yeah, believe me, I'm not going to fault anybody who has played a <laughs> basketball tournament and game like Terry Porter has. Now, now the, the thing has shifted, right? Oh, yes, he's a little off balance. He wanted to make sure it didn't get blocked and uh, just a little beyond his range, possibly. But still, all, all in all, not a bad shot. Now they have to be concerned because Fort Hayes does have a chance to score here, and uh, Co Coach Bennett has to decide whether to put a big man over the ball to make it difficult, because I think they'll throw the ball down to someone like Rollins uh, on this end of the floor for the uh, quick shot. But one second is... Uh, much to a uh, very long time, actually, and a, and a pretty good shot can be getting off, gotten off in one second. Well, Rollins has been the man in the basketball game for Fort Hayes. They've got Rollins, Eason, and Willie Shaw, along with Joe Anderson deep. There's the head man for the Tigers, Bill Morse, and the pointers will bring Lazarsic, Jantz, and Nagley back, and they will play their biggest man, Dave yeah. Schlund, at 6'9", on Coach the ball. Bennett. He was thinking along the same lines. Very good. There it is. No Grab fouls it. now. No fouls. There was no foul call, and we will play overtime. Well, they look to go deep to Nate Rollins, but a good job fronting him by the pointers, and we'll be back with OT, everybody, in 60 seconds. More minutes of basketball here tonight. We have overtime in the national championship game. We are tied at 44. The last overtime game in the title was in oh, 1981. Excellent. Pointers on the tip. Here's Terry Porter. In 1981, Bethany Nazarene defeated Alabama Huntsville 86-85 in overtime for the championship. First possession, especially in a game at this pace, Coach, important. Very important, and the first basket is the most important thing. And isn't it interesting that now we see uh, Fort Hayes going back to their 1-3-1 one, one zone? Interesting and curious, I would think. Their man-to-man -man has been dynamite. Their zone not nearly so effective. Yes, it is, and I think you'll see uh, uh, Point really protect the ball and get the shot they want. Ooh, nearly a bad pass from Jans, but Soderberg chased it down just out of the reach of Raymond Lee. Here's Jantz again. Good ball movement now by the pointers. Here's Terry. He's looking for that little jumper. He's missed his last two, and Edgar Eason has the rebound. Nate Rollins oh, has it. Is a turnover? You bet. Yes. You bet. Timmy Lizardzik chased it down. And I think uh, Fort Hayes uh, feeling the pressure just a little bit there as well. Well, now I'm betting on extreme patience here by Stevens Point. We played 110 of overtime. I got to believe they'll really get a good shot this time. Yes, I think so, because that first basket in overtime, for some reason, is awfully important, both uh, psychologically uh, as it would affect both teams. There's Terry looking for the move. This time he dumps it back out on top. Timmy Nagley had it blocked, but reclaimed it. Who's got it now? Willie Shaw. Here comes Lee. He's got Eason. Eason laid it in. Well, Ford Hayes got the first hoop of the game. 12 on the night for Eason. Ford Hayes with the first lead of overtime, 46-44. We've played two minutes now of overtime. Three minutes of basketball yet to play. Yes, the uh, pointers are standing just a little bit. I think they have to get back to their normal offense. Uh, of course, this, this uh, possession is a must. They have to come up with a basket here. Back out on top and nearly turned over again. Oh, my, the passes are getting a little bit right. sloppy down there, Steve. They have to penetrate with the ball. They're throwing that perimeter pass, and I think uh, they need to take the ball right inside and then look to the weak side, and they'll get themselves that nice 15-footer. 46-44, Tigers lead the pointers, 2.30 to play in overtime. 
And again, they're, they're being very cautious about getting that ball in the corner right now. There it is. Jantz looked at it, decided yep. against it. Terry in the corner. He's been working baseline all tournament. Not this time. He's got baseline again. Thought about it. Thought better of it. Patient Jantz, and here's Soderberg, and the pointers recycle. 2.05 to play now in the game. Two points have been scored, scored by Fort Hayes. They lead 46-44. We've moved under two minutes to play. There it is inside the penetration for the basket. Well, you called it, Coach. They got it inside of that zone, and Terry Porter hit what for him is an yeah. easy little eight-foot jumper. And that just makes things a little bit, uh, makes Terry breathe a little easier. Well, now it looks like Fort Hayes may run that little delay of theirs. We've got 1.30 yes. to play. They may be thinking last shot here with 1.30 to play. They've got the quickness that could allow them to hold the ball for a while. Yes, they're trying to get the advantage now so that they're, uh, they get the last shot and a timeout. Timeout, Fort Hayes, 46-46 a tie. More overtime in the national championship game right after these commercial messages. A tie basketball game at 46-46 with 1.22 to play. There have been four lead changes in this game. Our score has been tied 16 times. It's been a dynamite championship game, Coach. Yes, and here we're going to see them, I think, open the floor a little bit, and we have to be very, uh, pointers have to be very careful that Lee doesn't get the ball on the sidelines, about free throw line uh, extended, and penetrate to the middle of the floor and look for... Uh, uh, Rollins underneath. So they're going to take the jumper. Eason hit it. And Fort Hayes moves back up by two. One minute to play in the game. They stay zoned. 14 for Eason. Those two were big. 50 seconds to play. Soderberg. Point down two. 48-46. 40 seconds to play. Porter in the corner. We'll back see. out on top to Soderberg. See if Porter uh, looks for the ball inside. There's a baseline shot. May have hurried it a little bit. Yes, need the foul now. Need the foul immediately. 24 seconds to play. Raymond Lee's got the ball. Here's Edgar Eason. Lee's got it. 19 seconds left. Willie Shaw, 15 seconds left. Raymond Lee, Soderberg looking to foul. He can't foul him. Lee's dribbling time away. We're under 10. Eason's got it. Underneath is Rollins. Oh, oh, tipped turtle. away. Time Who's out. got it? Jantz time. chased it down. Timeout. Point. Three oh seconds. my. Three seconds to play. Well, Fort Hayes doing a good job of playing keep away there. The pointers tried to foul a couple times and couldn't get a whistle. They now have three seconds, Coach, to go yeah. from the opposite baseline and get the ball through their hoop. Yes, right. I see uh, Coach Bennett talking to the uh, officials. I think he wanted, uh, he thought another second had gone off the clock, but uh, three seconds is the way it's going to be. And uh, with timeouts, he's got a couple of ways he can go. He can try just to get it in with a penetrating pass, and three seconds, uh, they can get a good shot, or get the ball more to midcourt, take another timeout, set up an out-of-bounds play. Pointers do have those timeouts available to them. Here's Terry's shot, the one he missed. He may have heard that one just a little bit. Rebound claimed by Willie Shaw. Ball will be inbounded almost immediately in front of our broadcast position here on the court at Kemper. Pointers down two, three seconds to play. Yes, I think uh, if they can, they can get the ball into uh, uh, one of their guards or quick people and keep Terry Porter in the offensive end of the floor if possible and try to get the ball in his hands as quickly as they can for the shot. One thing the pointers do not have, Coach, is a good long-range bomber. They are a perimeter shooting team. They don't have a guy that you can give the ball and say he'll hit a 20-footer for you 50% of the time. Doesn't look like the inbounds pass will be denied at all. I think it will be for Soderberg. And another timeout. Mike Jantz got a look at the defense. They did not deny the inbounds pass at all, Steve. They played all five Fort Hayes men deep and packed him around the basket. Yes, that's true, and I think uh, uh, Coach Great Bennett ball. wanted to see whether they'd pick him up, man, or what they're doing. They will deny whoever comes for the ball, 
and I think you may see somebody deep come for the ball, try to get the pass, penetrating pass across the 10 second line uh, before the clock starts. And then three seconds is a significant amount of time to get a good shot off. Well, it's been two great nights of basketball for us at WEAU TV. We are so happy to be able to bring all of Western Wisconsin the Stevens Point pointers in the national championship semis last night. What a great win over Westmont, California. And here tonight in the championship game, and what a dynamite basketball game this has been. You know, I guess this one proves, Steve, you don't always have to score a lot of points in order to have an exciting game because this one has lacked for nothing except calm. It's been, <laughs> it's been tough all the way. Yes, that's true. Uh, the tension here is so uh, thick that uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see. He's put in two guards now for ball handling purposes. And I think they'll turn and look probably for Terry Porter, but if he isn't available, uh, either Soderberg or Hawley may be going for the shot. And a good pass Here's over Hawley. the timeline. Here's Hawley. He got it away. He got it away. It did not go. And Ford Hayes is the national champion of NAIA basketball for 1983-84. My, oh, my, what a game. Well, Craig Hawley had an opportunity. He had an opportunity to tie the game, but it was a tough opportunity. It would have been a great shot had it gone in. It did not go. Ford Hayes is the champion. The Pointers, number two in the country, 1983-84. What a great year for the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, basketball players, coaches, the whole university in the community. A reminder that the plane is due in at Stevens Point tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. We understand there will be a huge pep rally at 4.30 in Quant Fieldhouse. Hey, get out there and say thanks to these guys for a great season. Final record of 28-4. and four. They came within seconds of winning the national championship. Steve, it was a great game played by two very fine teams. Yes, that's true, and uh, uh, I can't... Uh tell the fans how uh, proud they should be of this uh, Wisconsin uh, Stevens Point team. Uh, just a great, great effort here. Well, again, the final score from Kepler Arena in Kansas City, 48 for Fort Hayes and 46 for UW Stevens Point. Couldn't quite do it, but sure did give it a go. For color man Steve Stevens, a special thank you to our great stats man tonight, Walt McAlexander, for our two fine guys here in Kansas City, Jeff Watts and Dick Dion, all the production people at KAKE out of Wichita, Kansas, who did such a great job bringing you these two games these last two nights. I'm Jim Crandall saying thanks for being with us, everybody, and if you are a Pointer fan, see you at Quad Fieldhouse tomorrow, and uh, be loud when you get there, all right? Good night from Kemper Arena in Kansas City.